Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, not quite, wasn't quite ready to make this thing, but it looks like they're starting to sanitize some of these numbers. Because look here, this is on the Discover Real Time Solar Wind. That's the one that's out there near the A satellite at the L1 Lagrange point. Anyway, look at this solar wind density. These are crazy numbers, guys. I looked it up, did a little bit of research, and I think it looks like one of the highest recorded numbers is around 11.7. So we got this thing up size 34 something there. And the reason why I say they might be starting to sanitize it is, look at this real-time solar wind. Same, uh, same site, Discover. And that last one, I had it on a uh, six-hour sample. So maybe it flattens out quite a bit on the seven day sample but I wouldn't think this much anyway there's the seven days and this thing looks a lot different than it did oh this is a one minute sample for two hours this thing looks a lot different than it did a few minutes ago when I pulled it up A lot different. Oh well. Anyway, here's the ace for seven days. And this is what I pointed out in the video yesterday. This solar wind density is down below one. And it's all fluctuated. As well as the temperature. And of course the phi angle is going crazy. Mostly connecting, this is a seven day run here. Mostly connecting to Nemesis behind the Earth. Anything above 180, that's Nemesis connection. But this here doesn't show up on, whoops. Doesn't show up on the Discover. See, the density is all pretty uniform. Oh, well, now it's real high back here. That's crazy. So look at the density. That wasn't showing up yesterday on this chart. They might have these two things flip-flopped or something on density anyway. I don't know. This is getting crazier and crazier. So that's the last six hours. Let's flip it. Or that's the last one day, rather. Let's flip it to six hours. Okay, there's the last six hours. So we got high numbers there. It's starting to come back down some. But like I said, the highest was around 11.7 just from scanning this article and this was back in february 97 where it showed the density looked like it got up as high as around 16 or 17. i'll put the link in the description box if you want to check it out but uh i think anything above 11, well here average sheath was 15.9, 9.2 atoms per cubic centimeter, plus or minus 15.9 to 9.2. Average densities, and these are after big CMEs, 11.7 to 8.2. And those high density readings on H, well, on Discover mainly led me to that 
that one I just showed you, but this was what I was looking at before. Here's the average, three to six atoms per cubic centimeter. This guy's got it at 7.1. These are different papers released in different publications. And this one's got it at 3.0. This one's got it at 500, but uh, that's just around the corona, apparently. Or during a huge mass coronal type ejection, I guess. At the Earth orbit, and this ACE and Discover satellites are at the 930,000 miles from Earth at the L1 Lagrange point, average is six. So, just to show you this real quick, this is the latest run on uh, Goes East 16. Full disk, natural color, that's the best band to catch this uh, object that we've been tracking for the last since the 17th and here it is guys same time same station same place batman around 4:15 utc it starts showing up they've got it pixelated out but you're still catching that reflection and that light beaming back which i still contend has to be from the sun simulator for that focus of a light beam reflection coming back since the sun simulator is small but when it lights up as bright as it is with the full led array it blocks out everything else in front of uh in front of it behind it rather i mean just turn on a light in, in your house and uh same thing happens, or a bright light in, in, a, in a very dark place. Nothing behind it. You're going to be able to see that light blinds you. And that's what the sun simulator does. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Here's the geospace. Showed something coming in around 1030. And the solar wind speed has come up. There's the density one. It looks like it's quite a bit of density all around. But the pressure, now that's changed. Now we're getting the red again. Whereas before, for the last three or four days, we were just getting almost no pressure. Now you can see the pressure's back up because I guess the solar wind being uh, elevated. So we're going to catch more pressure from the sun. But I mean, these densities. These density numbers are crazy. So as I, as it came to me, I mean, this stuff just, a lot of it basically comes to me when I'm narrating these videos. And the one last night I mentioned that the density was way up. And I uh, theorized that uh, reason being was we had that interplanetary electromagnetic equilibrium going on. So it seemed like the solar wind from Nemesis and the solar wind from, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the sun were pretty much at a standstill, but I thought maybe Nemesis was uh, winning a little bit more and pushing it out further, and that, that was causing the densities to pile up inside around the ACE satellite, and I would say that uh, this definitely seems to be bearing my hypothesis out, because these are crazy numbers, guys, like three times what the maximum density ever recorded was, and that was during a huge CME. Here's the latest uh, space weather run on ISWA, 300 frames. Not showing any big missing time. I, I ran through it and looked. 
these are the geosynchronous orbits that were the, that's where that goes 16 orbits and the Himawari 8 where I've been showing you that planetary object that shows up they're all orbiting around geosynchronous orbit around 22,000 236 to 241 miles above the earth they go they stay in a set orbit position without burning a lot of fuel and it's, it's where they can hang so that's where that picture we're, we've been getting is coming from a satellite that's in this geosynchronous orbit so uh, and the fact that they're pixelating it out we're trying to means they're trying to hide it so it's, uh, it's definitely not something that's normal and uh, of course with Nemesis being here and bathing the planet with all these electrons you can see these ele these uh, electron radiation belts uh, they, they've been coming up again and here's the backside bow shock false bow shock normally the bow shocks out here which of course it still is you can see it's getting crumpled up here and there from the backside pressure meeting the solar wind pressure from the sun and these lines would indicate our magnetosphere closing in the back these are closed field lines the polar cap black field lines are closing trying to ward off all this uh, extra pressure coming from nemesis and when enough plasma builds up there's a big plasma ejection with the blue okay just to reiterate real quick here's the L1 Lagrange point that's where the ACE and the Discover satellites are parked 930,000 miles in front of the earth between the earth and the sun and it stays parked in this position 24-7 of course there's the moon so all this data we're getting and here's the seven day run on ACE See how the density is all screwed up? And then we have these two, four, six, eight hour gaps on ACE, whereas we didn't have one for a couple days when the, there was one there for maybe six months straight. It started around four to five hours, then it went to eight, then it disappeared for two days, then it's back again. But on. Uh, uh, discover we're not getting the gaps so even though these things are parked out the same spot they, roughly they're far enough away that they are not being affected in a similar fashion by whatever planetary objects are blocking the solar wind stream from hitting the A satellite and I would submit that this density fluctuation has something to do with maybe a planet that's up there and its magnetosphere because it's between 0.1 and 1. That's really low. I'm running out of time. <coughs> so we'll pull this one up for you and let it run through. You can watch this. And uh, well, I'll make another video later today. I only got 15 minutes on these things, and I you probably wouldn't listen beyond that anyway. If you even listen for 15 minutes, unfortunately, we can see the solar wind speeds picking up inside here, and the, all these simulations are all governed by data coming from satellites that orbit around the geosynchronous orbit. Watch how the solar wind fluctuates. That's crazy. And it's all solar wind coming from the backside. And hopefully they'll show you those big numbers before I run out of time. I've seen some up in the fives and six. So there was a five. And as you can see on ACE, this is the last six hour run. It's coming up a little, thank goodness. So as uh, 
Well, I'm running out of time. Uh, God bless. Peace and